hotels. Get UN Biosphere Land for super cheap. And now wow. they've built it all up. And then later I learned they would kick the indigenous peoples all over Mexico off their cornfield lands they'd been on for a thousand years. They'd say, where's your deed? Well, I, we've always lived here in this village. This is our land. And they, that's why they're all in Mexico City. That's why Mexico City went from 12 million to 33 million in just 15 wow. years is they force them all up there off their land and then to the U.S. to have jobs. You can't blame them wanting to come here. And it's the same thing there, but it was U.N. sanctioned where the U.N. and big corporations just paid the Mexican government, and they said, okay, come on in and just take whatever they got. Wow. You know, yeah, and uh, and uh, Richmond Hyde, and well, I'll tell you, uh, Arnold, we were really shocked what, was, what happened in Arnold. We went to, I don't know if you know about Dr. Dukakis. He was the dentist. That's, there was a lot of publicity about it. They were building the uh, development around him, and they put dirt mounds and tore up the road so his patients couldn't come and they were harassing him. Well, we went down to do the interview for the documentary, and uh, we met this guy named Steve who had a trailer park. Originally, Arnold was all trailer parks, and now it's, I couldn't believe it. It's like one shopping center across from another. They have like 20 shopping centers for this little town. Um, and uh, he invited us to the city council meeting. He goes, you're not going to believe this since you're doing this documentary. Well, if you show up at the city council member and talk about eminent domain or redevelopment, the mayor at that time, the mayor pro tam, when we were there, said, uh, this is your warning. Um, you're out of order. Oh, that's all over the country that you're arrested. They say there's no free speech. We uh, No, I've seen it a million times, but no, I didn't know about this case. Yeah, and they basically dragged him out of the meeting. Escort of three cops, uh, escort. Arnold is one of the worst. He's been trying to get documents for a year and a half. They won't give documents. I said, I said. Listen, under zoning in Illinois, did you see this in the Illinois papers about five, six years ago? People wake up at 6 a.m. and the cops are in front of them. They come in your house without a warrant for a home inspection of zoning to make sure more people aren't living there that are supposed to. And even if there's two people zoned for the house, they will go look and see if there's more than two toothbrushes and then give you a fine if there's more than two toothbrushes now uh, for two people. Now, I've got like three in my drawer. And, you know, there's what like, happens if you're using a toothbrush to uh, clean your dog or your cat? You can't make this up. This was in the newspapers, and they were saying it was good, and the people were bad because they didn't like it. What's the name of the YouTube video? We're going to play your trailer first with them dragging the lady out. Do you remember the name? Uh, it's it's New uh, New London. It's one of the New London. New London woman taken from home. Woman. Yeah. Uh, uh, Costello. Well, it's Costello. Oh, oh, I interviewed them many times. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where New London, her? uh Connecticut, uh Costello family. Yeah. And they show her dragging her out of the house, and it's probably one of the most shocking YouTubes I've ever seen. We're going to find that before you go, but right now, let's play the trailer to Begging for Billionaires. Not enough for these... Fr Pigs to, and they are pigs, uh, to run our lives. They've got to have it all. They've got to have it now. And here it is. Just woke up from the American dream. Some of our elected officials are undermining our constitutional rights. The name of the word big business. Domain. Yeah, uh, there's. It, it's understood uh, that uh, they don't have the assets to fight it. You know, once they put well, the, the funny thing on he me, says, well, let's hit pause. Well, well, you're, you're as bad as I am. Because Back know, it up. Let's start it over when I'm not reading the text for people on the radio, and when you're not. You know what? I'm sorry. You thought we were off air. I'm. I'm. I was. I was reading the subtitles here. Let's. Let's start it over. I want folks to see this watching on PrisonPlanet.tv and listening on the radio. Here it is. When people hear the word eminent domain, um, it, it's understood that uh, they don't have the assets to fight it. You know, once they put the gun on me, we didn't have a choice. Because, you know, the law is on their side, not our side. So just imagine if every tree, every view, every familiar touch that your family had ever known for 80 years was going to be destroyed by a developer for a plan, for a planned project. It's been nothing but a nightmare where you can't sleep, you can't eat. He can't, can't even begin to function right because of all the harassment, the threats. To our knowledge, there were never any, uh, any problems with our property. They just coveted it, and they were going to take it. 
we've always had eminent domain for public works, for roads, for bridges, for schools, for streets. But the idea that we would take private property away from one person and give it to another private interest, that's a new idea. Those that have power, those that have the ability to influence what happens in City Hall are the ones that are going to profit from it. That is exactly what our founding fathers were trying to prevent when the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution was added to the Bill of Rights. You simply couldn't stop it. We couldn't stop it. And it didn't matter how um, beneficial and substantial and established uh, our, our, our presence was, we could not stop it. Take what's ours and make it theirs. Hey, everyone, nobody cares. There's the mural uh, that uh, the city was trying to tell them they didn't have a First Amendment right to, and it just gets worse and worse. Uh, for those watching and listening to that, tell us a little bit about the people in the trailer. You were you were uh, telling me uh, particularly about the black fellow, something that happened to him. Yeah, well, the, uh, he's the... Uh, spokesperson he, he he basically explains different things through the whole documentary and uh, he has had a bunch of homes that he bought to redo and he's a former city council member of uh, richard tobert and every time he goes against the mayor they would come in the middle of the night and tear down his house and with all his stuff in it his furniture his personal belonging he in one time they actually the demolition guy called him and let him come in to take out his property and he talks about uh his property and everything and but the best story he tells and i think it's the best piece in the documentary is the Re reverend ike story i don't know if you know about reverend ike reverend ike was a black preacher in the 30s who would tell people that you're too poor to um, have money send me your money and watch me enjoy it and i will sell you a prayer cloth and what he's saying, Richard, is you're too poor to uh, pay for an entertainment district or a, a a arena, which was part of the redevelopment section. Both of them were where Daryl Penner was. And, and they always use taxpayer money to build those as well. Yeah, well, it's interesting. That is total bond fraud, which we didn't cover in the documentary because it was too complex. But basically, it's a Ponzi scheme with the city because those bonds never get paid off. I'll tell you what, stay there. Final segment, we got to have you back. Uh, when we come back, let's uh, tell folks about some of the bond fraud and more about the film, Begging for Billionaires, the attack on private property rights in America. You see, folks, they're attacking the Second Amendment, Fifth, Tenth. Everything's being attacked. We'll be right back.